वेलकम बैक विल स्टार्ट विद एन सी आर टी क्लास सेवन पॉलिटिकल साइंस चैप्टर नाइन दैट टॉक्स अबाउट शर्ट इन द मार्केट नाउ विल अंडरस्टैंड द लॉजिक बिहाइंड हाउ मार्केट इकोनॉमिक्स वर्क सो इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ टॉपिक इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस विच इज मोर इंक्लाइन टूवर्ड्स द इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस फ्रॉम अ मच ब्रॉडर परस्पेक्टिव दैट रियली वी वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट विद अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस स्टडी ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश now we are talking about a farmer from andhra pradesh who is growing cotton now what actually happens let's understand so you have the farmer who is growing the cotton now this cotton appears on the tree as cotton bolls we call these as cotton bolls the round shaped white pieces of cotton now what farmer does is farmer has uh, farmer has the cotton plants and he is growing the cotton now this bowls come up and they do not burst all at once so when they burst it takes several days for the harvesting it requires numerous inputs like fertilizers pesticides then the farmer has to borrow money from the money lender and once the crop is there he would cut the crop and sell that in the market so he would sell the cotton in the market now once he is selling the cotton he'll get some money back with the money he gets back he will repay the loans that he has taken in this process farmer gets a very less amount of money now let's see how the actual price of the shirt that comes up into the market is very high and why a farmer gets a very less amount so as we saw the farmer for growing a cotton plant has to use fertilizers pesticides has taken the loan for various farm equipments and once he gets the money from the cotton plant he would pay a lot of it as the repayment of the loans that he has taken up now what happens actually so the trader would sell the cotton in the market now this cotton that is sold goes to the ginning industry or the ginning mill what does this ginning mill does the ginning mill buys the cotton and it presses the cotton so all the seeds in the cotton is removed so that's the main job of the ginning mill now this seeds when they are removed the cotton is converted into bales those are kind of flat sheets you can understand or layers of cotton that are created now these bales go to the spinning mill so under the spinning mill what would happen the spinning mill would spin the cotton into yarn so what happens under the spinning mill is cotton is converted into yarn and finally this yarn is sold to the yarn dealers so you have a kind of process that you have understood so cotton going to ginning mills at the ginning mill the seed is removed the cotton is compressed and it's converted into layers which are known as bales these bales go to the spinning mill and under under the spinning mill these bales or the cotton is converted into yarn or the threads now this thread the merchant is a kind of intermediary that plays an important role in this economic activity so what this merchant does is it takes the yarn and provides it to the weaver and tells the weaver what type of cloth they require so they tell the weaver whether to make a bed sheet whether to make a kind of sari or whatever cloth they want to now this weaver creates the cloth and gives back it to the trader what the trader does is trader earns by giving the yarn to the weaver and this weaver creates the cloth and gives it back to the merchant now what is the kind of activity that is running between the weaver and the merchant now uh, if we talk about the trade that is very very important here because the trade from the farmer's perspective who is selling the cotton into the market is solely dependent on the merchant the farmer most of the farmers are not literate they have problems like uh, various uh, health issues or something so because of it they require money and usually they are paid very less and whatever they are paid goes as the repayment of loans so the net income of the farmer becomes very me meager or very small now when it comes to the uh, weaver what would happen is 
the benefit for the weaver let's first understand those so the weaver would not have to bother about selling the cloth he knows that he has to give it to the merchant and the merchant would sell it so he does not have any headache regarding how he would sell the cloth the second benefit is weaver does not have to spend a penny to buy or procure the yarn for weaving so there are two things yarn is the thread and uh, weaver does a kind of finished product or a piece of cloth so this is something which is weaved out and if you have a thread that is a yarn so this yarn is converted into a cloth and the weaver does not have any headache or does not have to bother about procuring the yarn he has the finished product and this finished product he gives to the merchant and the merchant would sell in the market and the merchant would in return give him whatever labor he has done now they also don't have to bother about what to weave how to weave because merchant would explain them what they require so if the merchant is requiring a stock of say uh, towels he would give them uh, a order for the towels and they have to manufacture the towels or produce those in their power looms or the small scale industries they do that now what are the benefits or the weaver's dependence on the merchants now since the weaver is not bothered about anything he has a very high dependence on the merchant now merchant can take an undue advantage of that because merchant how they can take an undue advantage they can pay less to the weaver first of all they can not give a kind of ample amount of work to a single weaver they can distribute their work into numerous weavers weaver also does not know to whom this merchant is selling the product so if the weaver wants to sell the product himself they are unable to do so because they do not know the final customer so they are unaware of the final customer they sell the market in the garment factory this merchant sell the garment in the uh, garment factory and finally that cloth is used or manufactured as a shirt in the garment factory and most of these garment factory what they do is they do a kind of export processing or they export the garments so there is a kind of relationship that exists here that we need to understand and again uh, if we talk about weaver we already talked about how meager income a farmer gets now weaver weaver has to borrow money for the looms a cost of one power loom is around 20000 rupees and they have to work around 12 hours a day to get around 3500 per month so it would take them around 6 uh, months to take out the cost of the power loom they have taken the, itself and then again 3500 per month is a very meager income that a weaver is earning but it is much higher than the farmer's income now what is a putting out system putting out system means the farmer supplies the raw material and receives the finished product so the the sorry not the farmer the merchant 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 is giving the raw material that is yarn to the weaver and the yarn and, uh, and the weaver in turn is giving the finished product that is the cloth to the merchant and merch, this system is known as the putting out system and that is prevalent in india however there have been incidences where weaver corporations are now being established what happens under a weaver corporation uh, sorry weaver cooperative under a weaver cooperative all the weavers get together they remove the role of the merchant there is no more merchant that is intermediary and the weaver come together they look after the transport they look after the sales they look after the marketing and everything so they have a kind of their own group and this reduces the role of a merchants a lot again tamil nadu government has started a program for free uniform for schools so a lot of cloth has been uh, procured for this from the power loom weaver cooperatives and one of the weaver cooperatives there which sells uh, under its stores is known as uh, cooptex now what happens under the garment factory so this cloth that comes in that is weaved by the weaver under a power loom factory or a power loom industry goes for the shirt making now these shirts are usually exported so they are obtained by the various businessmen from europe and united states now what the idea of this businessman is to do they would get the product at the lowest price and sell them at a very high pro, uh, uh, rate so they would get an ample of profit now 
what they require is a quality in the production and the delivery time that is set up so they give a deadline we require this much stock by this much date so whatever you do by hook and crook you have to meet those deadlines otherwise your contract would be gone so you have the various exporting factories in order to provide the cloth at a lesser rate what they do is they cut their cost and they pay less to the workers so the workers who are working in the garment industry again get very meager uh, rate and the person who is owning this exporting factory would earn ample amount of profit and supply cheap garments to the exporting company or to the foreign company and the highest paid worker who are working in these kind of industries are given around 3000 per month so that's again a very less amount most of the women who are employed are employed for cutting the thread putting the buttons and for small activities of packaging and these women therefore are paid further less than the full time employees who are working in the garment factory now when it comes to a original price of a shirt that goes into united states you can see that shirt which is sold would have a profit of 600 rupees and that 600 rupees would be a profit earned by the multinational company it would have an advertising cost of 300 rupees that that foreign company is bearing to promote its sales and uh, promote its brand we have talked about advertisement in the previous lectures the storage and the transportation would incur 100 rupees and what this multinational company is actually purchasing is only of 2 rupees that means the garment industry which is located in india is selling the shirt at 200 rupees and at that 200 rupees you are adding 100 300 and 600 that's another 1000 rupees and finally selling this shirt at a 1200 mrp so that means the maximum retail price of this shirt which is being sold in united states becomes 1200 however the same shirt that company is purchasing from india at 200 so it's incurring a extra 1000 rupees when the same shirt is being sold in united states now this shirt which goes at 200 rupees from the garment factory now let's come on to the cost that the garment factory is incurring so this garment exporter is giving the shirt at 200 rupees he would have a cost of 70 rupees for the cloth and the raw material another 15 rupees for the workers who are involved per shirt another 15 rupees for the uh, cost as running his office so this together becomes 100 rupees so this cost of the shirt here is 100 rupees for the garment factory in india and it is selling it at 200 rupees so again the garment factory in india is getting a profit of 100 rupees so what we are able to understand here is this garment factory is getting a profit of 100 rupees this profit is enough in terms of the company that exists in india however that is not that which is to the mark of the profit that is being earned by a foreign company but out of this profit what actual profit percolates to the weavers to the farmers to the workers who are employed in the garment industry is nearly only 10 or 15 rupees per shirt so that's the pathetic state of the uh, economy if we talk about because we saw the role of workers in the industry we saw the role of weavers who are weaving the cloth and we saw the role of the farmers who are growing the cotton all these three are paid around 10 to 15 rupees per shirt and that is a very meager amount when the garment factory is earning a profit of 100 rupees and the multinational company sitting in the united states is earning a profit of 600 rupees so the actual producers do not get anything for the amount of input they are putting up and these poor people are really exploited because of their high dependence on the system 
So to work around this, you have new, numerous cooperatives that are coming up, numerous companies that are coming up. So with this we cover uh, the topic of shirt in the market. The idea was to create a kind of broader picture or a mindset to help you understand that what is the actual state of economics that occurs in a society and how there are disparities that occur. We'll be covering the final chapter for the political science uh, class 7 in the next lecture and then on we'll move with the NCRT class 8. Have a good day.